Okay. Well, hello, everybody. I hope that your fall semester is, wow, is as vibrant as the colorful leaves I'm seeing outside my window as we are into, full into um, the fall semester and we're beginning to see our signs of fall. So I want to welcome you to today's workshop, which is Build Your Financial Yes Plan. I'm Lisa Reichert. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the career and professional development lead within people and organization development, which is part of Berkeley People and Culture. And the last thing I bought was toothpaste on Amazon. <laughs> um, and um, speaking of buying and uh, related to today's workshop, I am thrilled to introduce you to today's facilitator, Erica Wasserman. And Erica isn't just any expert, she is your financial therapist. Erica is one of only 100 certified financial therapists in the world dedicated to transforming financial wellness across the globe. And not only that, she is an adventurer at heart with 47 countries under her belt and is a super mom to three teenage girls. So let's get ready to dive into more than just numbers today because Erica's approach is all about emotional empowerment and financial freedom. So think of this as our ultimate pre-Halloween treat and Erica is gonna help us to view our finances from a fresh and holistic perspective so that we all leave with a toolkit of beliefs, choices, and pathways to financial freedom and achieving our financial goals. So Erica, thank you so much for being here today. And the room is all yours. Beautiful. Thank you. So I'll do the same introduction. Erica Wasserman, I am your financial therapist. She, her pronouns. And the last thing I bought was at the craft store, a new new Halloween costume because my ex-husband bought the wrong one for my 13-year-old daughter. So we are changing Stitch into Cookie Monster last night. So talk about emotions with money. There was a lot happening there, both um, when my daughter got the wrong costume at the craft store and while I was cutting and gluing new, new eyeballs on. So emotions with money is everywhere, which is why I really love what I do and why I'm so happy to, to be here with you all today. It's a different approach to the way to look at money. And so what I'm going to do is I'll start sharing some slides, but we are a relatively small group, which is kind of nice. Um, we're right now around 22 people. If you're comfortable, it's nice to see faces. Um, we'll use the chat or come off mute. At a certain point, we'll also um, perhaps go into a breakout room if you're comfortable. So we want to create conversation around money. In the next 45 minutes or so, um, I want you to leave here with a financial yes plan. It's interesting, Lisa, that you mentioned about the beautiful leaves around you. Mel Brown said that fall is actually the best time to create a new goal. And that's because there's so much change happening around us. Literally, the weather's changing, right? The colors are changing. Schools started or in mist. Um, and reality is there's only a few months left to like get your goal in before the end of the year. Um, so you could take on a new habit and have a good chance of obtaining it by the end of the year. What I want to do today is get a financial goal for you. Now, this might be one that you could accomplish by the end of the year, and it might be one that takes several years. That's okay. Well, I like numbers, right? We're like, that's, I started in math. And if I told you that you had a 10% chance of achieving a goal just by writing it down. Would you write it down? Some head nods, cool. If I told you you had a 40% chance of getting your goal by writing it down, having a dollar amount and a date to do it by, would you take that? All right, pretty good, right? 40% chance. I'm gonna get you there in the next 15 minutes. So we're gonna have a 40% chance. But I don't like 40. I want to be at 95%. So to get to 95% to reach your goal, we're going to take you through a few steps during the Build Your Yes plan. First, some housekeeping. Lisa sent out ahead of time 
uh, a document that you could use to take some notes on, a handout. If not, don't worry about it. Grab a sheet of paper, your notes app. Um, I just dropped it in again. So the oh. to that worksheet is in the chat again. Perfect. So you can use that. You can also, like I said, grab a sheet of paper, um, put your phone on Do Not Disturb. Give yourself the next hour to learn, explore, grow your relationship with money. I'm going to ask that we hold all like specific questions to the end. Though, like I said, there'll be opportunities for us to engage beforehand. Uh, but if you have anything specific, I'll stay on. Don't worry about it. Now, before we begin, let's all take a deep breath. Close your eyes, ground your feet, take a deep breath in. Exhale. If you're comfortable, close your eyes. If not, have a soft gaze. Look around your room. Another deep breath in. And exhale. Reset your mind to focus on you, to focus on where you're grounded today, to showing up for yourself, for learning maybe something new, for sharing something with somebody on the call, to getting to your yes. Take a deep breath in and exhale. All right. You know, emotions with money are everywhere. And it's so true when it comes to money. Well, we often don't think about it. But what emotions come up when the discussion of money or finances happen? Anyone who want to put in the chat, what kind of emotions come up for you when we start talking about money? Anxiety, fear, stress, anxiety, fear. Ooh, stress, anxiety, fear, excitement. Woo. Yeah, that's a lot. And without us really thinking about it, it shows up everywhere. Here, let me give you an example. Who enjoys paying the dinner bill? Raise your hand. My hand should be down. I don't enjoy paying the dinner bill. I love you people. Let's go out for dinner. Who wants to go? I'm looking at a second screen. <laughs> I'm looking at, right? You love paying for dinner. Interesting. And there's other people that you'll see slip away, go to the bathroom, not pay the dinner bill. What about a group setting? When that bill shows up, if you're out with colleagues, are you the one that just reaches for the bill and say, I, I got it? Or are you the person who says, hey, let's split it equally? Or are you the one calculating, I had a soup and a water and, and it's going to be seventeen thirty five for me and twenty three eighty seven for you. The same piece of paper we're talking about, the bill, has different emotions for everybody sitting at the table. Yeah. So in a big group, Lauren, I mentioned you, you like splitting equally, which is great. But generally, we don't ask people who are at the table. We just assume and do it. What works for best for us, what makes us feel least uncomfortable. But money shows up everywhere. And like I said, I use this example also with like, how about going out to dinner with a family member? So if you're the oldest in the family, is it your responsibility to pick up the tab? Or do your parents still pick up the tab for dinner? For me, I got to dinner with my mom. She generally picks up the tab. It's nice. I like going out to dinner with her, right? It's it's a nice treat for me for once not to have to pay the bills. Flip side is I have a friend. He's expected to pay for everybody in his family, the cousins, the aunts, the uncles, every time they sit down. He doesn't like family dinners, not because of the people in the room, but because that invoice that comes at the end. Something to think about as we go through our daily lives, because as you mentioned, emotions with money can often lead to stress, anxiety, definitely awkward conversations. Lost time work, if you're of like loss of time of work, 
If you're stressed and not feeling well, you're going to doctor's appointments, maybe unnecessarily. You're irritable with colleagues, with your family members. It can be a lot, which is why I ended up getting into financial therapy. Oh, actually, I'm going to step back for a second because I see somebody that said my parents, depends whether it's my parents or my husband's parents, right? Different norms because different people interpret relationship with money differently and have different expectations, which leads me to the second picture here, which is your partner. What was it like when you guys went away for the first time? Was it a discussion ahead of time of who's paying for the hotel, who's paying for the flights? You know, you're going to go zip lining or go get a cabana for the day. How did you decide who was going to pay for what? Anybody? What kind of conversation was that? Default? That's generally what happens is we avoid the conversation. On average, okay, we take turns, his vacation, his friends, he pays, my vacation, my I pay. Everybody sorts out what works best for them. I don't remember. Yeah. Our relationship with money overlaps in so many different areas. We just talked about group dinners. We talked about with a partner. What about at work? When it's time to talk about getting a raise? or vacation days or whatever it is, conversations can often be awkward, but it doesn't have to be that way. But we're told not to talk about money. We're supposed to talk about all these other great elements of, of wellness, right? Your emotional needs, your environment, I'm too hot, I'm too cold. Intellectually, occupation, you get a mentor, you know your next steps in life. Physically, you exercise socially with your friends and relationships and spiritually. But when it comes to money, it's taboo. But what happens is if one of these elements are off, you're off balance. And when you're off balance, stress and anxiety come in. I equate like when you're off balance with your finances, like a toothache, right? A toothache is, oh, I have a toothache. I'm going to leave it alone. Some people like that. I have a toothache. I'm going to leave it alone for three years. All of a sudden becomes a root canal, more pain for three years and more pain for surgery and costs more money. The same is with your relationship with finances. The longer you leave it alone and don't de delve into it, the more it's going to cost you and the more painful it might be, which is why I love my job so much. So I became a financial therapist after um, getting a degree from the University of Florida in finance. Worked for IBM for over a decade, lived all over the world, um, which was really amazing. And um, in 2017, I lost my father, who was my financial accountability partner. So in 2019, when I heard of financial therapy, the aha moment went off. And Kansas State has a program for a financial therapy graduate certificate. And never heard of it before. Now I've learned that there's several universities that have it. University of Georgia, Texas Tech, Golden Gate, um, or to, to name a few. So went, got the certification, fell in love with it, joined the Financial Therapy Association, and I'm one of less than 100 certified financial therapists in the country. So what I work on is the emotional side of money, not the dollars and cents, but all the other senses, which is going to lead me to the roller coaster of life. I don't know about you. My life kind of looks like this. Twists, turns, dips. I've actually never met anybody with a straight line. Not sure I'm ready for that. <laughs> but some of these have made my hands throw up and scream with excitement. And others have made my stomach drop. Right? So I got married at a young age. I don't say young age. I was 23, but young age, right? Um, I had three children very quickly and I got divorced. So I had, uh, three kids under the age of four left corporate America and my marriage, Whoosh, right? Did you feel that in your stomach? Cause I felt it in mine. Um, with that end up moving States had unexpected bills, changed jobs, the death of my dad, roller coaster of life. 
What happens though, in all of these twists and turns, money come at play. Back to that wellness wheel. All of those need to be in balance. So the better you know your relationship with money, and that's not just what's the dollars and cents in your account, but how money makes you feel, the confidence you have to ask questions, the less the dip is going to be, the less sharp the turns are going to be, because you're going to have options and opportunities because you know what questions to ask or what resources that you want to get to. So with that being said, let's dive into our yes plan. Mindset is so important. Money, let's think about it as food. When I say the word diet, what do you think about? Throw it in the chat. Diet, anybody love a diet? Restriction, yeah. Taking something away, a plan, deprivation, yeah. Diet is very, okay, now I'm gonna ask a question. What does the word budget mean to you? A plan, consistency, discipline. Sometimes constriction comes up in both of these. Focus, a structure. I equate a budget to a diet. Something with good intention, but feels constricting. And at some point, we eat the piece of cake. We go out for dinner and buy the extra bottle of wine, right? Oh, that's it. I'm ready, you know, off my this month's budget. Doesn't matter. What I want to do is build a lifestyle for you, for your finances. Lifestyles are subtle changes that allows you to stay the course. And that's what a yes plan is going to be, because this is about mindset. And I want you to start saying yes to what's important to you. Today, I'm going to lead you through an exercise that's going to bring your emotions towards money, your desires to a financial goal to create a unique yes plan that's just going to be for you. So everybody in here is going to leave with something different. So let's think about it for a minute. What do you want to say yes to? Grab a pen, write it down. I'll pause here for a minute. What do you want to say yes to? Some people in past sessions have said, they want, yes, they want to get out of credit card debt. Buying a new home. Buy a car. Save for retirement. Pay off student loans, the dream wedding, or maybe a fabulous vacation. What do you want to say yes to? I tried to do a poll, but we weren't able to do that. So it'd be great if you guys could pop in the chat a Michelin. Uh huh. Yes. Pay off your mortgage, buy a house. Keep them coming. New furniture, beautiful. Some of these yes plans, like I said, are going to be two, three months long, and some of them are going to be 10 years long. Yes, wedding funds, European vacation, stability in the future. All right, Linda, we're going to come back to that one. I'm going to I'm going to push you on that one a little bit. Okay. Does everybody have their yes? Yep. All right. My yes plan I'm working on right now is to get through the holidays without changing my monthly spending, which means I have to shift or say no to some things that I normally say yes to this time of year. So that way it's going to pay for my gifts and travel. Saying yes is an important first step in shifting your mindset and commitment. Saying yes repeatedly, loudly, with clarity is going to help you get a clear intention of where you want your money to go which is also going to make it easier to say no to other things. Now that we have your yes, we're going to define it more. What is the dollar amount that you need to get there? So now that you wrote down your yes plan, next to it, how much is this going to cost? So Mike, your wedding fund or Linda, stability in the future. That's why I said I'm going to push you a little bit on this. What is that dollar amount? 
the long-term expenses, furniture, the summer vacation. Be real with yourself. Not the number you want it to be, but the number that it actually will be. So if you need to bump it up, bump it up. Let's get, let's be real honest with ourselves here. Okay, hold on. Let's go back. Sorry. I'm going to I'm going to help you here. So Renee, just being able to save for unexpected expenses. I need more than that. That's you can't create a plan on an idea. Right? Sherry, a lot. And that's what happens when I start working with people. The idea is so grand is I just want to feel safe. I want to feel financially secure. We need a number. And sometimes it's backing into it. Is it three months of emergency savings? Is it 12 months of emergency savings? What number can you swan, as I like to call it, sleep well at night with? And again, this could be $10,000. It could be $100,000. It could be a million dollars. What? Pick a number though. You have to be consistent. So if we're building a plan, this is your blueprint. Love it, Bob. Get that new car. Spray the new car spray. Yes. Future for the family. For three of us, $3 million. Love it. Saying yes to that is embracing it. And all these numbers are going to vary because everybody has a unique plan. So we can't judge what others are doing because they're not in our relationship. Our relationship with money is the same way it is with our text messages. Some of us can have 807,000 unread text messages and others have to have it at zero before they go to bed at night. The same is with a financial goal. Every number is going to be slightly different depending on what you need, where your safety is. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. So now we have what we want to say yes to, a dollar amount that you need it, that's okay. And now a timeline of what you think it will take to get there. Like I said, some of the goals might take 30 days, some three months, and some three years. From past sessions, we've had people say they could pay off $5,000 of debt in the next six months. Another person said, I could save for $25,000 of a wedding, my partner and I, in 24 months. Or, yes, I could pay for that dream vacation by December 15. Maybe it's next year, right, at this point, for $3,000. So putting a date in there, great, Mike, you said two years, but I actually want a date. So what are we in, 2024? So is it November 1st, 2026? Come up with the date because this is the next statement that I want you to write. I can say yes. Yes, I can buy a new car with $20,000 by X date. Yes, I can have a beautiful wedding with... I forgot how much the dollar amount was you put in here by January, 2026. I'm going to pause here so you can write it all out. And then I would love if you could share in the chat, that would be helpful for all of us to see and to help you keep accountable.
Awesome. Great job, Lauren. Love it. I believe you can. We got a wedding coming up. We got that new furniture for New Year's that you're gonna that you're gonna enjoy. We got a trip to Ghana. All right, can I come? I have three more countries to cross off the list. You don't mind, right? <laughs> All right, for five thousand, yes, yes, I can. Yes, I can. What? I think there's a few more out here. Yes, love it, Sherry. Pay off that mortgage. And it's a long time frame. That's okay. These are goals that we're setting for ourselves. So we'll see here everything. We've we've had somebody put in a thousand dollars for their yes plan that could be done in the next 10 weeks to the next 10 years working on a yes plan. So saying yes is fun until our mind starts playing games with us. And mindset's gonna be really important to get you across the finish line. This is a flexible skill that can be learned and sharpened. So let's explore it a little bit more. We wanna shift from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset. Well, what does that mean? If you walked around all day saying, oh, I'm always gonna be in debt, there's a good chance you are. If you shifted the sentence to say, I'm actively working to pay off my debt, or I'm actively working to pay off my student loans in the next 48 months, it's now taking on a movement. You're not in a fixed statement. You're in growth. You're allowing for ability. You can have a conversation where somebody says, oh, I can never have the wedding of my dreams. We want that happen to Mike, right? We want him to have the wedding of his dreams. So what does that mean? It's going to go to, I'm going to have the wedding of my dreams because I'm going to save $50,000, which means I might have to say no to a few things, but my wedding of my dream is going to be awesome. I can't go on that family vacation. Maybe that trip to Ghana, right? To family time is important and I'm actively seeking ways to make it happen. Research showed that the direct correlation between negative emotion and procrastination the more anxious we feel about completing a task, well, the less likely you are to do it or to obtain it. So we need a different framework to approach the change if we actually want to take action. I want you to take it a minute here and think about revising a fixed statement into a growth statement for yourself. Again, the sheet of paper, the back of the paper, or just think for yourself and pause. What is this fixed mindset that you say to yourself about your goal? Now, how can you shift that to a growth statement, to something that you're working on, that you're actively seeking? Okay. Anybody want to share their fixed statement to growth statement here? I'm going to pause for a second. Just pop off mute if it's something that you'd like to share. And that's okay too. On paper, we all have similar goals. We can, right? In theory, I can have a car, you can have a car, you want to, I feel like Oprah, you get a car, you get a car, right? We could all have a similar goal, but it's the why that's going to set us apart from everyone else. It's your purpose. It's what inspires you to go after it and stay committed to your yes plan. What are we going to do? We're going to define your why. Why is having a new car so important to you? Why is 
Lisa, can, can you jump off mute and I'm, I'm going to help you with this? We're going to do this exercise and then we're going to jump into breakout groups afterwards. Yes, here I am. Okay. So I saw you put in there, which I got very excited about is tell me about your yes. Yes. You want to go where? I want to go on my first ever European vacation. It's a, a trip with my sister. So we're going to go away for two weeks and yeah, we want to see all the sites and stay in great hotels and do lots of cultural activities. So yeah. I want to save 7K by September 2025 to yeah. go on my European vacay. Why is that important to you? Why is that trip important to you? Uh, well, it is a birthday milestone and it's the first time I'm really going to be like traveling out of the country for a while. And it's with my sister. and we, we like to plan special trips together and have a good time. Why, why do you like traveling with your sister and have a good time with her? Um, it's just fun. We live uh, across the country from each other. And so it's a way that we get to really spend time together and make, you know, fun memories and hang out. Yeah. Memories with your sister are, are why are they important? I, I love and adore her. And we have fun together. We miss each other. And so we, we plan this time together. Yeah. So what I was doing there, and, and you could drill down more or keep it light like we just did, is our purpose isn't always the first thing that we say. That European vacation, absolutely. First trip, stay at nice hotels. That's great. When we start drilling down, and often I ask people the question, why three times? So when we go in a breakout group, if you want to ask that question three times to your partner, that will be helpful. Um, and what we learned was it's the memories that you're going to be creating with your sister, the time together. And so that value of that $7,000 isn't necessarily for the hotel room, the beautiful hotel room. It's about those moments of, you know, sharing, waking up in the morning and having coffee in Italy, you know, on your balcony. It's, it's those sweet moments. And so when you have your why it deepens your, your reason to stay focused to the plan. So if we can, and if you're comfortable, we're going to break out into breakout groups. If you're not comfortable in a breakout group, um, stay here with me and we'll, we'll do it as a big group. Uh, but I want to give everybody the opportunity to drill in on why their yes plan is important to them. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I will put people in breakout rooms. And again, they're optional, so you can stay here and hang out. And I'll pause the recording. And if you want to chat or ask Erica questions, you can do that too. Um, and but we do encourage you to go into a breakout room and connect with a colleague and share because that will increase your chance of uh, accomplishing your goal, as Erica said earlier, when you share it, write it, share it, you're increasing your chances. And if you are in a breakout room and you're by yourself, just give me like 30 seconds to move you so that you can connect with someone. And if somebody comes in, please welcome them. So, all right, here we go. Um, because, so when we say yes to things, it actually is going to help us to start saying no to other things. And usually saying no is something that's uncomfortable. We don't really like to do it often. If you're me, um, it's easier to say yes. And we start pleasing others versus meeting our goal. So before pause before your next financial decision and say, will this help me reach my goal? If it's yes, great. If it's no, then don't do it. So for example, a cousin calls you to say, hey, Nicola, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick on you again. If I, if your cousin calls and says, Hey, um, can I borrow $300? How would you say no? I think it would depend on the circumstances. Tell me more. Um, so you said if my cousin said wants to borrow $300. Yeah. There's a, there's a concert this weekend. I want to borrow $300. You know, she's not going to pay you back. I would say no then. Cause that's okay. not. Show me an example of how you say no. Because a lot of people don't say no, but it's something we don't practice. I would say, um, I appreciate you asking me to support you with this, but 
that is not in my current financial budget. I know you said not to like budgets are like different, but that's not something I budgeted and I have other financial priorities at this time, but I hope that you're able to find another way to save up to go. And would you really say that? that? Could could you say that? Yeah. Okay. And so I wouldn't feel bad saying that. (laughs) Sometimes it's saying no, because what happens if every cousin neighbor calls you and borrows $300? That money is actually getting taken out of your yes plan and put on to somebody else's yes plan. So when you ask, what is it for? Your mom needs it to get cancer treatment. You know, you're going to, you're, I'm not, I don't know you, but I'm going to say, right. Then all of a sudden you're like, let me see what I can do. And you, and you maybe try and figure some things out. Um, So it is circumstantial, but start asking a couple extra questions when somebody asks to borrow money. Um, Here's another one. What about if your neighbor asks to borrow your car after she's gotten into a car accident talking on the phone? and needs to go to a doctor's appointment and says, hey, let me borrow your car for a couple hours. I need to go to the doctor. How do you say no to that? Anybody want to take a crack at it? I mean, I can go again. I've said no to someone borrowing my car before. And I said, like, my insurance is pretty strict about allowing other people on there. Um, and then if it would be possible to offer, yeah, to offer a drive, like if I'm available to offer a drive, I would offer that instead. Um, that's what I would do. Yeah. Because your car next to your house might be the most expensive thing you own. And this person just got in a car accident with it. So if the, if, if let's say they get another wreck, that's again, money out of your pocket into somebody else's. So learning to say no takes practice for some of us. But like any skill, you always want to keep learning. And as you keep learning, there's lots of things that might come up. So that's what our next tip is, is I want you to keep learning. So again, have that sheet of paper. And I want you to write down some questions that you maybe have been too embarrassed to ask. If you're looking to buy a house, maybe there's a question that you've been embarrassed to ask, like, I don't know how to find out my credit score, or I don't know what my credit limit is, or where do I go to get um, a house inspection? I don't know. These are your questions. (laughs) What's coming up? Also, is there a boundary that you can set? Going back to the cousin $300, maybe you set a boundary. When I think of boundaries, I think of like, you know, when you go bowling, the the guardrails that come up, that's what I'm thinking about. So I only loan $50 to friends. Maybe that's a boundary. What boundary could you set? Or is there a topic that you want to research or learn more about? At the end of this, you or if you already have the handout printed, um, you'll see on the back, there's some questions of things that you want to research, questions to ask, and boundaries around three areas of money, saving, spending, and investing. I put some in here just to, to give some ideas. You know, we're talking about retirement earlier, you know, an investing question of research is, you know, can I increase my retirement matching? Are there benefits at at the college that I'm not using? Who do I ask for a financial advisor? Is there a minimum? Like these are questions that I see so often um, that people have. So take some time after the session to write down your questions that you have of things you want to learn, boundaries you want to set, or things you want to research. Here's the interesting thing. When I start talking about money or scenarios or dream homes, right, or vacations, my brain starts going. I get a lot of what if stories. Anybody else get a lot of like, oh, what if I did this? And how would that be? And oh, my goodness. Stop. Ask yourself, is this a fact or fiction 
that's happening. If it's fiction, if it's false, push it away, give it away. If it's a fact, sit with it and come up with a realistic plan. Because I don't know about you, but I'm great at storytelling for myself. And so are most of my clients. Recently, I had a client, let's call her Claire, share with me. She thought like, if I just don't open up my credit card bill, then I don't have to deal with it. Well, is that fact or fiction? Yeah, it's fiction. Ignoring the credit card bill doesn't make it going away. In fact, it actually is going to make it worse. The fact that Claire has credit card debt, we now need to come up with a plan. And with small shifts, she actually was able to pay it off in three months versus ignoring it, it would have accrued interest and doubled that amount. So when your brain starts wondering, pause and ask yourself, is this fact or is this fiction? And talking about brains, these are for my visual learners. I want you to see it. Take a snapshot of it. Create a financial vision board. So Lisa, you're talking about your European vacation. Cut out the pictures of sipping coffee in Italy, right? Or the or Big Ben. Lauren, for that house, cut out a picture of what it actually looks like. Maybe the color paint that you want the door or your bedroom to be. Visualizations and actions are intimately connected. It's involved in the motor cortex. A Harvard Business Review stated that like when we use visualization, an action, we stimulate the same part of our brain as if we actually performed it. Think about athletes, right? They visualize the winning pass or a singer visualizing their performances. I want you to visualize what your yes plan looks like. I'll actually pause here for a second. What are the colors that you're seeing? Mike was planning a wedding. What song is playing as you walk down the aisle? How you celebrate when you buy your furniture? What I'd like you to do is put a picture up. So this is my vision board. As I mentioned, I believe earlier that I have a finance, oh no, it was a different call. Sorry, I have two webinars today. I have a vision board. Uh, I keep in my bathroom, my three teenagers, my only private space um, where I have financial visions and I have quotes that keep me motivated. One is that I'm a wealthy woman and wealth is defined in so many different ways. Um, and this helps me stay on track of what's important. You can also, I did this on Canva, you could do it old school, get the flyers and magazines out, or it can even be the screensaver on the back of your phone. And then when people ask you, well, what is that? You get to share it. Because that's the last piece of this. This is the key to success. By sitting here today and thinking of your goal, remember we started the conversation, we said it was a 10% chance of getting there. You'll have a 40% when you decide how much and when to do it by? Well, we did that in the first 10 minutes. But 40% isn't good enough for me. So I want you to look for who could be your accountability partner in this. Because that's what's going to get you to 95% when you have committed dates and check-ins. So grab that sheet of paper, brainstorm. Who could it be? It could be back to a cousin. It could be a friend or a coworker. It could be a romantic partner, a parent. Who's going to help you see this vision, call you out on your BS when you're not meeting deadlines, brainstorm with you on ideas when you need them? What I'd like to do right now is if we can do another quick breakout group, and I would love for you to share your vision with somebody new. Here's a great opportunity to tell them of what you want for your yes plan. So we could do five minutes again, Lisa, if that works. All right, looks like everybody's joining us back. Welcome back. I hope you had a, a nice time sharing your vision. So what I'd like to do in the next few minutes is we're gonna do a wrap up and then um, open up for, for Q and A. So, as we close, emotions with money can be overwhelming. It takes practice. 
Um, it's not something that happens overnight, just like any new skill or hobby. It just takes practice. So here's a few things that you could take away from our conversation today to keep practicing this is your mindset. Shift your mindset to a growth mindset. Define your why. Understand why it's really important to you. Learn how to say no to a few things because as you start saying yes to what's important, it will also get easier to start saying no to others. Learn a few new skills and decide what's fact and what's fiction, what you're telling yourself. See your vision, cut it out, look at it, share it, frame it, put it up uh, in your office next to the door, and then share it. Share it with your family, with your friends to help keep you accountable. I personally want to thank you for um, joining me and also for being so open and honest about what you're building your yes plan to be, um, because saying yes to your finances is also saying yes to you. Once again, I'm Erica Wasserman. I'm your financial therapist. If you're interested in continuing the conversations at home, again, the Let's Talk Finances cards are available on Amazon, and I am going to stick around here to answer questions. There's a QR code if you want to stay in touch or get the handout, but I know um, Lisa has already put that in the in the uh, chat, so we should be good that way too. So I will pause now and open the floor up. Thank you so much, Erica. This was really great. It was fun. It was engaging. It was like creative and envisioning. So thank you so much for your support in helping us reframe how we think about our finances so that we can achieve our yes plans. Really appreciate it. Thank you all for being here, for engaging. I put our evaluation in the chat. We love your feedback. I'll also follow up in an email, send the evaluation and a link to the worksheet again and um, any other resources. And hope you all have a great afternoon. Um, if you have to leave, Certainly understand if you want to hang out here for a couple minutes and ask Erica any questions, uh, you can do that too. And I will go ahead and I'll, I will end the recording at this point. So you can do that.